several guys know that I attack Walsh choke uh, very, very heavily. Um, I'll explain it here in a second. There's a big difference. I'm a huge anti-arm and guillotine guy, per se, myself, personally. I feel like I never finished it. Being arm in, it's a lot of work. I got to try to push his chin. It's hard for me to finish. The major difference for all you uh, lower rank guys or beginners is the difference between this choke and this choke is just where his arm's at. Right, it's not across my body. Just like a triangle, I would choke him with his arm across and it helps me choke. Same rule applies here in this wall choke. Where I hit it from mostly is I'll be taking the back. So I'll be here with like this seatbelt. And everyone knows that when I start driving this knee in and I've got the seatbelt, everyone's thought process is he's gonna choke me, right? He's gonna, he's gonna choke me, he's gonna go to his back, put his hooks in, he's gonna run naked choke me. No one's thinking about me falling back off the front. With my knee already splitting him, that's what's going to keep the separation to keep his arm across his face. Because when I change my grip here, I go over the top of his head. Instead of here, I go over the top of that as if I'm trying to grab inside my thigh. Okay? My right knee is still splitting his elbow and his knee. Very important here in a second. Because as I start to fall now and make this same gable or this same, same guillotine grip, I'm going to grab the fat part of my left hand. As I start falling underneath, I'm going to slide his elbow across to his face with my body. If I fall off and give him space, he pulls his elbow up, and now I'm just an arm and guillotine that I'm hard to finish. If I don't give him any space, I'm in the seatbelt, I come over the top, and as I fall, watch his arm, there's no way he's getting that arm up. My knee goes across his waist, my instep's on his hip, and my left leg comes over the top to close it up and it's just a light squeeze and he taps. Okay, so one more time. Starting that seatbelt. Everyone's thinking rear naked, bow and arrow. Everyone's thinking the back attack here. No one's worried about me falling back over the front. I've already done half the work by getting my right knee in here. Okay, so when I go over the top, I essentially just grabbing inside my right thigh here. That's putting my bicep real tight to his neck. And I'm, as I start falling, I'm going to make the connection and grab my hand. As I start falling, I grab the connection. And it taps pretty much as soon as I land. It gets really tight. Okay? One more time. It's pretty basic. I think you guys, all levels can take this home with them for sure. I mean, it's something, and I use it on the highest level guys in the room. That's, this is my main attack. One more time. I take the back. Try that knee. And just as if I'm trying to take this back and see if I go over the top this time. I can grab my thigh, connect my hands, and I fall underneath. Pushing that earth. There's no way I'm giving him space to wiggle this right elbow up. I would lose everything. I've got to stay tight. He's not moving that right arm up. And he gets choked. If it fails, Levi's game, right? If it fails, if somebody that fails, he pops his head up. I'm right in my drag. And I come right back up. I've got his back. All right? Oh. Tap him, it fails. I don't lose anything by going off the top. Like, I would hate to go for a guillotine and lose position. I'm on the bottom, especially when I'm a MMA guy. I have no fear here. He can't keep me on the bottom. If he fails, I just get right back up. No other guillotines like that. Right? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Ready, set. Yeah.